you guys. Welcome to the very first episode of Ohio with me, Jacqueline Davis. Today, I am joined by my friend and Jump Scare's very own Sierra Kamalao. Hello, scaredy cats. Today we are going to be talking about body horror in anime. The genre represents the fear of our of the fragility of our own bodies and the moral panic of sex, the alien, the unknown, parasitic diseases, and the consequences of playing god with science. You know, the huge, the fun stuff. Yeah. This can be found in sci-fi, horror, and even fantasy genres, and of course the ones that are all mixed together. Yeah. Anyways, are good at that. In anime, body horror is usually representative of puberty and the trauma of being forced into adulthood. The stories typically follow a young adolescent boy because shonen, right? Shonen. And generally, the metamorphosis, metamorphosis of the protagonist's body is met with extreme resistance. They fear the lack of control over their own bodies, they fear the reactions of others around them, and they, fe they fear the perceived loss of their emotions and therefore their humanity. It isn't until the climax of the plot that the protagonist embraces their new body as a means to defeat the ag antagonist, agonist. even at the agonist. It's a good band, antagonist. <laughs> even at the risk of losing control and hurting those around them. Although the themes of changing bodies and the anxieties that go with it are present in shoujo anime and manga, the female protagonists are generally represented as the magical girl. Aww. And the glitter. The all the glitter and the gems and the pretty things. And not like not the monster-like body horror protagonists their male counterparts become. However, however. A good example of a female character who endures these similar traumas is Corona Yasuhisa. 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 Okay. Yasuhisa. Is Corona Yasuhisa. She is also a one-eyed ghoul, like Ken Kinneki in Tokyo Ghoul. However, she became a ghoul on her own accord after her parents were murdered by a ghoul. Spoiler. Spoiler alert, by the way which may be the equivalent of a personal decision to grow up. She knew that she was, she knew what she was going into, yeah. rather than being thrown into it blindly like her male counterparts. Mm -hmm. Before her transformation, the death of her parents still embedded a sense of nihilism and distance in her like, in her like being and emotions. Mm -hmm. While Kaneki dealt with the same traumas and emotions, um, Yasu Yasuhisa. Okay, Yasuhisa <laughs> was led to her transformation by them, as opposed to experiencing them, as a result of it. So, in simple terms, this is a metaphor for girls mature faster than boys men. Mm -hmm. These gender roles are reflective of societal and cultural pressures and norms. However, in terms of the magical girl genre, which shows such, with shows such as Sailor Moon and Tokyo Mew Mew, which is kind of the closest thing that straight up shoujo has to body horror, the transformative natures of their bodies are relatively trauma free. Instead, with their shortened skirts, bejeweled tops, and fabulous makeup, not to mention the cute poses. The girls coming of age stories are presented as something to look forward to and even strive for as a woman. I mean, that's what we're told, even when yeah. we're younger. Yeah. We want to be women. We are women. Woman. Woman. Make babies. Yeah. Yeah. Unable to accept their changing bodies, they may experience fear, loss of emotion and control, a sense of alienation, and lots of dead moms. Everyone's got a dead mom. Dead Not moms. everybody's got a dead dad, though. Although there are plenty of those. Yeah. But dead mostly, mom for you. Dead, dead mom, mom for you. You, you get a dead mom. Everybody gets dead moms. But we're going to talk about that in a later episode of Pop of uh, Ohio. So make sure to check that out. Yes. Shameless self promotion. Anyway. <laughs> 
I want to thank Sierra very much for joining me on my very yeah. first Ohio. And I want to thank you guys for watching the very first episode of Ohio. Now, let us know in the comments what your favorite body horror anime is. Now, it, this doesn't, it's not necessarily something really gory and horrific like Parasite, for example. Which is one of my faves. Yeah, my, I'm really digging Blue Exorcist. I just Blue started Exorcist watching is good. it. Body horror really can also it. be supernatural and yeah. deal with gods and demons and stuff. Yeah, yeah, or, you know, some of Satan. Satan. Do you have a favorite? Oh, again, Parasite. Parasite, I think because I'm emotionally invested. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm emotionally invested in Parasite. Mm -hmm. I had to stop watching for a while because Spoiler, dead mom happened. Mm -hmm. I got really emotional and sad. Yeah. And then I, after I took the break, watched the next episode, some, someone else died. Spoiler! No breaks at all. I was like, I thought we were done with this. Hashtag angst. Angst. <laughs> now, be well. sure to like and subscribe to the PNTV channel on YouTube and hit that little alarm thing so you can and that, the, get the little, the little bell thing. thing. What's the, the that the, one the point? Alarms. That one, there's a poem about bells. Oh, from the bell tolls. For whom the bell tolls? Yeah. That one. For whom the bell tolls? For us. <laughs> I am your host, Jacqueline Davis. And I'm Sierra. Oh, bye. Bye. Stay spooky. Shameless self promotion. That's it for uh, what, our episode this week. <laughs> <laughs> ew, ew, that was disgusting. I'm so sorry to everyone that saw that. <laughs> 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 hey.